Right now on IUS TV News, a man is in jail for allegedly raping a woman at knife point, why he is now facing other charges as well. Plus, a Bloomington charter school is forced to cancel class after a student finds a message on a bathroom stall. We'll tell you the consequences a student now faces. And county leaders want your input on a possible new site for the future Monroe County Jail, why the project is facing continuous delays. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. I'm Perry Payton. And I'm Mike Badrov. You're watching IUS TV News. Bloomington police say a woman is alive, but horrified after a random sexual attack on Sunday. It happened just before 6 in the morning, near the roundabout at 17th and Monroe Street. The woman told police she was walking to a nearby gas station to grab a drink. A man, who police identified as Rodrigo Perez Curiel, grabbed her and threw her into a ditch before holding her at knife point during the assault. Curiel allegedly told her several times he was going to kill her. Police used license play cameras to eventually track down Curell. As he was being booked at the jail, police say he ran out a door while handcuffed. Police were able to catch up to him and take him back into custody. He is facing three counts of rape armed with a deadly weapon. Monroe County Commissioners want your input on a potential site for the future Monroe County Jail. A public meeting is set for three on Sunday afternoon. This is at the Will De Detmore Park on Vernal Pike. Commissioners had their eyes on the North Park property near State Road 46 and Interstate 69. That's just outside Bloomington city limits. But late word on the Verno Pike site caused two of the commissioners to vote to wait on the approval. As of now, no date is set on when the property could be approved. Bloomington police have arrested the man they say robbed a bank last week, sending two area schools on lockdown. This man, 44-year-old Charles Strebles, is charged with robbery. Police say Strebles called detectives Wednesday and said he wanted to turn himself in. Officers arrest him near Bloomfield Road and Patterson Drive. Both Bloomington High School South and Templeton Elementary were on lockdown in the minutes after the robbery. A Bloomington charter school was forced to cancel classes Wednesday after students found a threatening note on a bathroom stall. We're told a student found the message school shooting on October 2nd, 2024 on Tuesday. Police interviewed several students and said a 12-year-old girl wrote this note. She was taken to juvenile detention on a misdemeanor charge of imitation. The project school teaches students from kindergarten through eighth grade. A man will spend the next eight years in prison for a 2022 rape that happened in a Bloomington parking garage. Andre Hardy pleaded guilty to one count of rape. The other charges were dismissed. The assault happened just after 10, the night of September 1st that year. Owen told police Hardy followed her out of the stairwell and assaulted her between two parked vehicles. Hardy ran off when the woman yelled for help. U.S. Marshals and Bloomington Police arrested him the week after in Illinois. Hardy will also have to register as a sex offender. There are new big changes in IU School of Education. The school has changed their curriculum to fit new state literacy requirements. Our Sydney Moore talked with future teachers who say, although this change is scary, they are hoping it will help students struggling to read. 33% of all teachers in the state are IU grads. When this change came about, IU was quick to recover, revising 64 literacy courses in just six months. This means all teachers that receive their license after June 30th, 2025 will be required to have a state literacy endorsement if they are teaching students between pre-K and sixth grade. Um, it's definitely scary because we're not, like no one's used to it. Obviously all the teachers that aren't teachers right now are also learning it too, so it's kind of new for everybody. Currently in the state, 77% of fourth graders are struggling with reading. To combat this issue, school districts across the state are adopting the science of reading based curriculum. I've noticed a shift in more of a change on like the importance of picture books and actually like how foundational that is in building students early literacy skills, especially with upper elementary grades. Like we talk a lot about the importance of like still reading with fourth, fifth and sixth graders um, because they are at the age where we think they're more liable to um, fall off the wagon, so to speak, when it comes to like, their literacy skills. This method provides instructional practices that focus on phonics, phonemic awareness, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. 
We do know that there is a literacy problem and kids don't know how to read, so hopefully this new curriculum fixes that. Science-based reading will come to schools across the state beginning next year. This will make Indiana one of 39 states using the new curriculum. In Bloomington, I'm Sydney Moore, IUS TV News. IU met with literacy experts and national reviewers to ensure the curriculum follows the guidelines of this new change. The Monroe Capital Improvement Board is sharing new renderings of the Convention Center expansion project. The new design makes changes to the room and creates a bigger lobby area. The $52 million project would bring an additional 60,000 square feet. The current site is to the east of the current Convention Center between College Avenue and Walnut Street. The Capital Improvement Board meets again next Wednesday. The county hopes to break ground in the spring. Flu shot clinics on campus are back for the month of October. The Student Health Center is offering free flu shots throughout flu season to encourage Bloomington to stay healthy. The flu shots are free and available for enrolled students, faculty, and staff for IU. These shots are by appointment only and must be scheduled online. We've got a list of dates and times for, the po for you posted on the story on IUSTV.com. IU has put the Indian Student Association on cease and desist for hazing and alcohol violations. The organization must suspend all activities until further notice. ISA has declined when asked for a comment. The IO spokesperson said the investigation is still open. The cleanup from Hurricane Hylene is just getting started in the southern United States. Hundreds of roads remain closed. Several towns are still isolated. At, at least check in. At least 189 people were reported dead, and that number expected to climb in the days ahead. Cheryl Hubbard has the latest. President Biden. The worst of Hurricane Helene may still be untold. We are still searching. Hundreds of people are believed to be missing. In one Tennessee community Wednesday, loved ones held up photos. What about these families that are waiting to hear about their families? When are they going to get the closure they need? anxiously awaiting status updates on their loved ones. We are trying our best to bring answers and closure to families about their loved ones. More than 4,500 federal personnel are helping in recovery efforts in hard-struck areas. FEMA says the terrain in some areas may complicate recovery efforts. As we look at the infrastructure damages to water, to the cell lines, to power, the ability to get those turned back on is going to be complicated just by the way uh, Appalachia is configured. With many failed roads, many crucial supplies are being delivered by airdrop and in some cases, mule train. Wednesday afternoon, Vice President Kamala Harris toured debris in Augusta, Georgia. There's a lot of work that's going to need to happen over the coming days, weeks, and months. Also Wednesday, President Joe Biden finally getting a firsthand look at the cataclysmic conditions left in Helene's wake in western North Carolina. He pledged every available resource to assist in the recovery efforts. The United States, the nation, has your back. The nation has your back. We're not leaving your back on your feet completely. I'm Sherelle Hubbard reporting. President Biden ordered the deployment of up to 1,000 active duty soldiers to help speed up delivery of crucial aid into stricken communities in North Carolina. Well, we are just 34 days away from Election Day, and early voting in the Hoosier State starts next week. That means the last day to register to vote in Indiana is next Monday. Monroe County residents can vote either in person, online, through the voter portal, or by mail. Mail-in forms must be sent to the voter registration office by October 7th. You can also register in person there or at the BMV. BMV. Early voting begins next Tuesday. IUSTV is your home for the 2024 election. We will have the co covered on all the latest headlines up to and on Election Day. You can find more on IUSTV.com. If you own a Tesla Cybertruck, heads up. Still ahead, why the company is calling thousands of electric trucks to get off the road for repairs. Plus, more Americans are filing for unemployment. We have the updated numbers from the Department of Labor. But first, a massive port worker strike is threatening to cause major ripples to the U.S. economy. How it could impact store shelves and your wallet on the other side of the break. We're back in a few. It has now been two days since the nationwide port strike began. Concerns over the dock workers strike is already impacting availability of some products, leading people to begin stocking up on products in their homes. Angela Bohan has more. 
No contract, no work. No contract, no work. The International Longshoremen's Association is demanding better pay and restrictions on automation. We are the union! But word of this strike here along the East Coast and the Gulf, coupled with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, has led to this. A lot of emphasis. I'm like, what's going on? My hope is that humanity was actually trying to buy things for Helene victims. I was just very shocked <laughs> and thought, here we go again. And that flashback to the COVID pandemic can cause anxiety for some. Jerry McCauley is a licensed clinical social worker at Reboot Mental Health. He says it comes back to self-protection and trying to do something that's in our control. Especially when peak periods of time like post-hurricane, the election season, politics, when everything is kind of up more, we recommend sticking with basic routines. He also stresses the importance of self-care, good sleep hygiene, and... Know your triggers. If you know you have a friend that's kind of hyper responsive to things and this is going on, maybe that's not the first friend you go to for support. Meantime, ODU economics professor Bob McNabb hopes that consumers will not panic. If the strike starts pushing into a second week, third week, we're going to start to see some disruptions. Goods that are imported from China, agricultural goods from South America, goods from Europe. The strike has been put on hold until January, and of course, we will keep you updated. Jobless claims are on the rise. The federal government reports first-time applications grew from 6,000 to 225,000. The application provides unemployment benefits to people without jobs. Economists expected this increase and believe this will tend will continue growing over the coming weeks. Despite claims, the numbers are similar to the pre-pandemic and still stay below historical averages. Former First Lady Melanie Trump says she backs abortion rights. She made the announcement in her upcoming book in excerpts Melanie wrote, restricting a woman's right to choose whether to terminate an unwanted pregnancy is the same as denying her control over her own body. She also noted that this has been her standpoint her whole life. The book is Individual set to freedom is a fundamental principle that I safeguard. Without a doubt, there is no room for compromise when it comes to this essential right that all women possess from birth, individual freedom. What does my body, my choice really mean? The book is set to publish October 8th, just one month before the election. If you own a Tesla, your vehicle might be on recall due to a rear view camera issue. The National Highway Transportation Safety Administration says the rearview mirrors on the Cybertruck could be delayed, which can cause an increase of a risk of crash. 27,000 Cybertrucks are being recalled due to this issue. Tesla has released a software update that will fix the issue. This marks the fifth recall since the Cybertrucks were released last year. As we slowly begin heading into the holiday season, Amazon is trying to get ahead of the busy season. The company announced they will be hiring 250,000 full-time on part-time seasonal roles across the U.S. There are also job openings for customer fulfillment and transportation. CVS Health is cutting nearly 3,000 jobs in an effort to slash costs. That's less than 1% of its workforce. The company says the costs are primarily corporate roles. The reductions are not expected to impact frontline jobs in stores, pharmacies, and distrib distribution centers. The cuts add to the 5,000 or so layoffs disclosed last year. The layoffs are part of a multi-year initiative to cut costs by $2 billion. The British rock band Pink Floyd has reportedly agreed to sell their music catalog, their name and likeliness to Sony. It was a $400 million deal. Pink Floyd has reportedly been trying to sell the catalog for several years. This means Sony is now able to make profit off the merchandise and future movie deals. Sony only has rights to the record recorded music, not the band's song writing. Next on IUS TV News, after former President Jimmy Carter turned 100, you may be asking, how can you do the same? We have tips in today's Health Minute. Plus, we have been seeing some gorgeous weather the past few days. Grace will let us know if it will stick around when we come back. More people in the U.S. are living to 100, including former President Jimmy Carter, who hit that milestone on Tuesday. 
Experts say there are ways to boost your chance of becoming a centarium. Mandy Gaither has the tips in today's Health Minute. It's a milestone more are reaching, and the number of people who hit 100 in the U.S. is expected to more than quadruple over the next 30 years. But when it comes to living healthier for longer, experts say age is more than a number. Instead, aging is marked by metabolism changes, cells no longer replicating, stem cell exhaustion, meaning they aren't replenishing as quickly, and declining immunity. Each one of those hallmarks of aging, as they're called, is a potential area for intervention where you could actually extend lifespan by focusing on those things. Dr. Sanjay Gupta says that while we do age a little every day, studies show there are bursts of molecular changes that accelerate aging, and he says they happen when a person's around 44 years old and again around 60 years old. Those things start to change primarily at those ages. So those are ages where you should really start to pay attention to aging more than you normally do. The CDC says healthy aging means making good lifestyle decisions and developing healthy habits. That includes nutrition, having a healthy balanced diet, keeping our minds stimulated, getting enough sleep, staying physically active and socially connected and engaged with others, and managing stress. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Turning to weather now, have you been loving this weather? It's starting to feel like fall out there. Yes, it sure is just in time for October 3rd, Mean Girls Day. And you have your dress to... Yes, I do. It's Wednesday, so we, we wear pink on Wednesday. <laughs> Lovely. And then can, I hope you're giving us a better outlook for the weekend, too. I'm looking for some sun. Yes, I am. There was a ton of sun today. It's going to be a trend that we're going to see throughout the week. Tomorrow morning on the way to school and work, it's going to be a very cold, not too cold though, morning in the low 50s, but it's going to be a quick warm up at noon. We're going to be looking at the 70s and then at 4 p.m. We're going to be at 78, pushing almost 80, but not quite there yet. Starting to feel like fall weather. Moving on to the weekend, IU football at Northwestern, hoping for another Hoosier win. We're starting off in the low 50s in the morning. Quick warm up to noon. It's going to be 71 degrees and 70 degrees by 4 p.m. Perfect for some fall football. And then looking forward to the seven day forecast. It's going to be sunny for most of the week, but that sun's not going to warm the temperatures up too much. We're looking at the 70 range. It's going to be perfect for fall. If you plan on going out this weekend, I definitely recommend it because we're going to be in the 80s. That's amazing. I love to hear. It's also go to a pumpkin patch this weekend. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is in sharp contrast to last weekend. No rain, only sun. There Perfect. we go. I love to see it. Thank you so much, Grace. Yes, you're welcome. Next in sports, it was a mixed week for the IU men and women soccer teams. Allie has the recap in sports. Stay with us. This week, Indiana soccer had mixed results. I'm Ali Hom, and let's talk soccer. Indiana men's soccer secured a 3-2 win over number 8 Wisconsin in Madison on Tuesday night. Sophomore Colin Aldrell led the way with his two goals, making his first scores of the season. Senior Tommy Mahalik also contributed with a goal, bringing his tally to six for the season. Indiana took the lead three times, ultimately winning in the 64th minute, with Ordo's decisive goal. This victory boosts Indiana to fourth in the Big Ten standing. The Hoosiers undefeated against Wisconsin in 15 matches will host Washington next on October 4th. In a tough matchup, Indiana women's soccer lost one to nothing to Washington at Husky Stadium. Key moments included senior goalie Jamie Gertzenberg making crucial saves to keep the first half scoreless. Despite effort from freshman Layla Serta, early in the second half, the Hoosiers struggled to find the net. A red card for senior midfielder Hope Parajes in the 62th minute left Indiana a player short and Washington Kelsey Branson scored the game winner in the 84th minute. Indiana is now 0-1 in the series against the Huskies and will now face Iowa on October 6. On to football, the Hoosiers are aiming for a historic 6-0 start and an early bowl eligibility. Indiana is coming off week five win at home against Maryland on Saturday and the Hoosiers head to Evanston to take on Northwestern. The Wildcats are looking forward to its first win against the Power Conference team, but Indiana's strong run defense faces key tests against the Wildcats ground game, making this matchup crucial for both teams. Kickoff is set for 3.30. 
And for the latest on all things IU sports, be sure to tune in each week to the Hoosier Sport Night. You can catch it Thursdays on IUS TV. And that's all for sports. Back to you at the desk. Hey, thanks, Allie. Let's get one last check of that seven-day forecast. Yes, it is going to be a great week this week. Lots of sun, no rain, partly cloudy on Friday and Saturday, but nothing too crazy. Tuesday through Thursday, we got sunny, sunny, and sunny again. It's going to be a great week. Nothing like last week. Thank goodness. Whew, I can't take any more of that rain. Yeah, me neither. I don't want to walk in the class when it's raining anymore. My well, umbrella has had enough. <laughs> well, thank you, Grace, and thank you for watching IUS TV News. For updates between newscasts, check out IUSTV.com, and we look forward to seeing you back here on Monday. Take care.